Climate change is making farming harder on earth and with nearly 8 billion people to feed, we need new solutions. Surprisingly, the answer might come from space. We have figured out air, water and shelter for space travel. But what about food? Remember the Martian, Matt Demon's character grew potatoes on Mars using soil and well human waste. But is that actually possible? Scientists have been working on real solutions for farming on Mars and the truth is way more exciting than fiction. Let's explore how we might one day grow food on this red planet. Growing food on Mars isn't as simple as planting seeds in the ground. Because well, it's Mars. There is no soil on Mars. Just dusty, poisonous regolith. The mixture of loose rock, sand and dust that makes up the planetary surface. On Earth, the regolith is replete with billions of years worth of broken down organic biomass which is soil that just doesn't exist on Mars. We will need to create a layer of soil that can support life. And to do that, we first have to get rid of those toxic soils. Plants on Earth have evolved to thrive in our gravity, atmosphere and sunshine. They need rich soil full of bacteria, plenty of water and stable temperatures. Mars on the other hand is a freezing, dry desert with weak sunlight and high radiation. So why not just send food from Earth? Because it's insanely expensive. Right now, shipping something as small as a can of coke also to space costs around $10,000. Plus, if supply missions get delayed, settlers could be left starving just like in the Martian. But there is some good news. Mars does have some useful resources. There's frozen water in the polar ice caps and underground reservoirs. Plus, scientists have found that plants can grow in Martian soil. Still, farming on Mars won't be easy. Plants will need special shelters with breathable air, protection from radiation and stable conditions to survive. And here's the tricky part. Humans need the same things. If we are not careful, we could end up competing with our own food for resources. So how do we solve this? Let's find out. The basis of food systems on Mars would involve water harvested from the soil. Rovers have shown that there are small but significant amount of frozen water in the crust and even cyanobacteria which is often referred to as the blue-green algae. Once bacteria are happily thriving under a Martian sky, they will provide nutrients needed to support luxurious crops or plants. A Martian city could be imagined as a lush green space with hydroponics and soil-bound crops filling tunnels, carpeting domed craters and growing in every unused corner. Advanced greenhouse technologies like vertical agriculture that create a suitable control environment will provide abundant leafy greens, vegetables, fruits and specialty crops such as herbs, coffee and chocolate. Animal based systems will not be viable on Mars but protein could be produced abundantly through cellular agriculture and precision fermentation. Precision fermentation involves creating proteins by utilizing modified yeasts, fungus and bacteria that consume starches and sugars on Mars. This will largely come from food waste and turn them into desired proteins. Cellular agriculture involves taking stem cell samples and growing them in the lab to create cuts of meat that are identical to those from animal agriculture. Edible insects can also be incorporated for space food applications such as the Mars mission. In this context, the required food to support life in a space mission or enclosed ecological environment could be harvested from enclosed agricultural systems. Because proteins from animal origin will be difficult to produce due to its constraints related to the extraterrestrial environment, efficiency in the use of biomass energy such as rare edible insects could be considered. Synthetic biology can be applied for enhancing the plant performance. Special facilities can be designed to allow the plants to survive the harsh environment of Mars such as enhancing photosynthesis and photoprotection or improving the drought and cold tolerance or even engineering high yield and functional food. A complementary approach would be to engineer the plants for enhanced performance under Martian conditions and endeavor which will require substantial modifications at multiple levels but will ultimately bring benefits in energy, water and habitat space use. Recent studies indicate that the reduced gravity level on Mars of 0.38 grams which is compared to 1 gram on Earth, may not be a major problem for plant growth and development. Enhancing Photosynthesis and Photoprotection Challenges of the light availability is one factor because the sunlight on Mars is around 43% lower than on Earth. 
Green houses will further reduce available light. So improving photosynthesis can boost biomass and save energy by reducing the artificial lightning needs. Expanding light utilization. Plants use only 400 to 700 nanometer of the light spectrum, which is just 50% of the solar energy. So re-engineering the light harvesting complexes could expand the absorption to UV and infrared. UV transparent greenhouses and engineered UV protection could enhance the growth. Improving photosynthetic efficiency. Enhanced photoprotection can prevent damage from excess light, boosting rubisco efficiency and carbon dioxide concentrating mechanisms could increase the carbon fixation. Engineering synthetic carbon dioxide and fixing pathways could overcome natural limitations and maximize the growth. Mars high carbon dioxide to oxygen ratio may naturally enhance the carbon fixation. Coming to improving drought and cold resistance, water as a crucial resource. This is needed for plants and multiple outpost applications. Extracting ice and recycling water, it requires energy allocation, so hydroponics may increase the energy demands. Enhancing the drought tolerance. Modifying the stomatal behavior can be done to reduce the water loss. Plants can be engineered with the CAM mechanism, crassulation acid metabolism mechanism for water efficiency and resurrection plant traits can be introduced for extreme drought survival. Addressing Mars cold temperatures. Cold hardy plants reduce greenhouse energy demands. Using ice binding proteins can prevent cell damage. Modifying the membrane fatty acids and osmoprotectants can be done for frost resistance and implementing synthetic circadian regulation can be done to anticipate the Martian night temperature drops. Engineering high yield and functional food. Limited greenhouse space and nutrient availability. Key nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen may be scarce. Ideal crops must have high productivity, minimal maintenance and provide balanced nutrition. Boosting plant growth and yield. High density planting by modifying shade avoidance response, engineering plant architecture to enhance biomass production and optimizing the root systems for better nutrient absorption, especially phosphorus. Nitrogen fixation for sustainability. Utilizing Martian nitrate or engineering plants to fix atmospheric nitrogens can be used. Enhancing microbial nitrogen fixing ability to support plant growth can also be done. Enhancing nutritional value. Engineering plants to produce essential nutrients like carotenoids, developing multi-biofortified crops for better health benefits and improving the food quality with extended shelf life and reduced allergenicity. Different traits can be engineered simultaneously to take full advantage of plants on Mars. Microorganisms can be engineered to facilitate plant life on Mars. This conceptual microbe scavenges atmospheric hydrogen and carbon dioxide and it is also customized to condition Martian soil for plant growth by reducing the soil perchlorate salts and increasing the soil moisture like water, chlorine, calcium and magnesium. Growing plant on Mars would work much better if they are combined with helpful microbes. These engineered microbes could improve Martian soil by removing the toxic compounds and enriching it with nutrients to support plant growth. Since Mars has a different environment, scientists would need to modify these microbes using synthetic biology to make them work effectively. Once plants are thriving, microbes could also help break down plant material to produce useful proteins, chemicals and medicines. By using plant sugars and biomass, they could generate essential resources quickly and efficiently. The best part is that a wide variety of these useful microbes could be transported to Mars with minimal space and weight requirements. The ideal microorganism candidates are yeast and algae. Both can readily withstand harsh conditions on Earth and are relatively easy to engineer. They are nutritious, reproduce rapidly and take up far less space than traditional crops. Conditioning Martian soil for plant growth using microbes. Promising results from simulations. Several plant species grow very well in Mars soil simulants. Martian soil based farming may require 90% less water due to lower leaching. Microorganisms for soil conditioning. Identify microbes that survive in extreme conditions with minimal nutrients. Antarctic dry valley microbes use trace gases such as hydrogen, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide for energy. This method could help microbes colonize Mars. Tackling soil toxicity. Martian soil has high toxic perchlorates harmful to human health. Instead of water-based removal, use engineered carbon dioxide utilizing bacteria to break down perchlorates. 
This biological process could also release water bound in the hydrated perchlorate salts. Enhancing soil moisture. Engineered bacteria can produce polysaccharides or adhesive proteins to bind soil particles and reduce dry. A team of researchers propose a bioremediation approach using microorganisms that naturally consume perchlorates and break them down into harmless chloride and water. This technique commonly used on earth to clean contaminated land could make Martian soil also suitable for farming. The team creates mass like regolith by adding perchlorates to earth based minerals. Then specially chosen microorganisms are added to remove the toxic perchlorates. This microbial activity adds organic matter improving the soil for plant growth after which the treated soil is sent to Florida Tech where researchers test its ability to support crop growth. At the University of Arizona experts study whether the microbes successfully detoxified the soil or not. From regolith to soil, how can we grow food on Mars? Martian soil or regolith isn't naturally suited for farming. First, we need to remove harmful perchlorates and add nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus. Since Mars has a small amount of nitrogen in the air, we can extract and convert it into plant-friendly forms. Phosphorus will naturally come from Martian rocks. Now to create real soil, we need organic carbon which can come from cover crops. Fungi, bacteria and worms will break down the plant material to make nutrient rich soil. Worms also can improve aeration making the soil healthier. Growing food on Mars will need careful control of light, temperature and radiation protection. While sunlight on Mars is weaker than on Earth, we can boost it with LED lights or reflective surfaces. Shielding can be done with regolith, ice or thick greenhouse walls. Next is crop selection. At first, we will have to grow resilient crops like millet. As the soil improves, we can introduce grains, legumes, vegetables and even fruit trees. Hydroponics will help food grow quickly, but long term soil farming will be more stable and even low maintenance. Single cell proteins come from fast growing microbes such as yeast, bacteria and fungi. These tiny organisms can double their biomass in hours, making them an efficient way to produce food. SCP can be grown using minimal resources such as the carbon dioxide from the Martian atmosphere and nutrients from waste recycling. SCP can be turned into food pastes, protein powders or even textured meat alternatives. It provides essential amino acids and can supplement plant-based diets on Mars. While hydroponics and soil farming take time to set up, SCP can provide a rapid, reliable food source to sustain early shelters. Microbes for metabolite and protein production from plant material. Harnessing microbial biochemistry. Using synthetic biology to produce industrial and consumer products. Sustainable production. Replacing oil-based, inefficient or non-industrially viable products like chemicals, medicines or spider silk. Extraterrestrial efficiency. On-site biomolecule production reduces the transport burden and maximizes the resource use. Autotrophic versus heterotrophic production. Photosynthesis, acetogenesis and methanogenesis use carbon dioxide but have metabolic limitations. Aerobic catabolism of plant derived sugars offers greater ATP generation and flexibility. Plant biomass as feedstock. Versatile and adaptable input for multiple bio based products. Medicine production on Mars reduces transport needs and prevents medicine degradation. Plants will be the ideal for oral medicines, avoiding fermentation and purification, whereas microbial bioreactors can provide compact systems for pharmaceutical production. Pichia pasteuris as a key microorganism. It is metabolically versatile and gene engineering friendly. It grows on methanol, which can be derived from Martian resources, such as carbon dioxide, methane and hydrogen, ideal for producing medicines, metabolites and materials in space. Cyanobacteria is also transforming mass for life. Cyanobacteria harness Martian regolith nutrients, atmospheric carbon and nitrogen, solar energy, water from ice caps, subsurface ice atmosphere or even hydrated minerals. Additional carbon dioxide, water and organic materials from human activity can enhance cyanobacterial growth. Cyanobacteria generate essential biomaterials to support heterotrophic microorganisms and plant growth establishes a self-sufficient biosystem for long-term space missions and planetary colonization.
रोड मैप फॉर रिसर्च ऑन एडेप्टिंग लाइफ टू मार्स A group of researchers proposes creating a Mars biofoundry, an automated platform designed to speed up the engineering and testing of plants and microbes for survival on Mars. They use fast-growing organisms such as algae, yeast, and bacteria before applying the traits to the plants. After which, the plants are screened, where selected species are tested in Martian-like conditions. This Mars biofoundry integrates the design of synthetic biology approaches. with an automated platform for implementing bioengineering designs in plants and microbes a facility for high throughput phenotyping under simulated martian conditions the process then iterates as a design build test cycle eventually engineered organisms could be periodically transported to mars to perform experiments with miniature growth facilities and remote monitoring of performance on mars would provide critical knowledge to adjust the work carried out at the biofoundry on earth researchers from arkansas in the us proposed to plant rice on the martian surface mars has key elements for plant growth like water regolith light and carbon dioxide simulated studies showed that martian regolith can support plant growth the challenge was that high magnesium chloride in the soil it inhibited the rice germination To resolve this the researchers suggested genome editing of this particular gene to trigger a cascade of stress related mechanisms this may possibly change and improve the plant's response to the martian soil to magnesium chloride this initiative is a more practical and affordable way to use the resources of planetary bodies to sustain the food supply of space exploration programs as opposed to expensive resupply missions what do you think let me know in the comment section thank you mm-hmm.